Hey guys, it's Core Ross, and today we are talking about Rainbow Six Siege and its issues. And those are content, cheaters, and bugs. So these will be the subjects we'll be going over today. And these are the cornerstones of a live service game. And if one of these or multiple of these are broken, then your game is dead in the water. So let's start with content. So I believe Rainbow Six Siege's content has been reducing gradually over the last five years. And I think that decline has definitely accelerated in the last two years with, I think, a chunk of resources also being split off to maintenance of back-end systems like creating the reputation system, mousetrap, things like that. Things that are more as seen as trying to keep the game healthy and setting up a better foundation for the future. But we'll come right back around to that later in the video because that's going to be covered in the bug section. So let's go back to content. So yeah, content has definitely been going down over the years and it's a real pity. Now, seeing something like X Defiant launch recently with a ton of content is like looking at the old days Rainbow Six Siege where they're getting like a map every single month for a year. That's incredible. They're getting, of course, new factions every season and a lot of changes. But the game is still a bit unbalanced. It's even got some of uh, Rainbow Six Siege's kind of history to it because like Siege, it is the first FPS game based on its game engine which has never been used for an FPS before. Just like how Rainbow Six Siege, when it launched it, which is a game engine which had never been used for an FPS before, so they had a lot of hurdles to pass before they could get it working good. But the main thing to take away from X Defiant is that the game is not profitable. And that is going to be the case for probably a couple of years until it builds up a bigger player base and then it can start to make more money than it's losing. And of course, as the ages of the live service game, You'll see in the year 9 of X Defiant someday, if it's still around, it'll be getting nerfs, nerfs, nerfs in patch notes. It'll be getting less and less content per year. And you'll see the same thing kind of happen to what's happened to Rainbow Six Siege. But if Ubisoft sticks with it and manages to make X Defiant a success, then it'll become a big money maker for them. So back to Rainbow Six Siege, I actually made a video in 2018 that was called Monetizing to Ramp Up in Year 4 of Rainbow Six Siege. And I made that video because I was very concerned about Rainbow Six Siege's future and how it was going to get more and more monetized and less and less content. And looking back at that video now, which only has about 16,000 views, so it didn't do good on YouTube, but I was glad to make it because I was concerned at the time. And of course, fast forward to today, we've got major issues and they've also, with probably one of the worst seasons they've released with content and bugs and issues and cheers, they've also launched a subscription service. So like the pinnacle of everything is coming together, monetization going through the roof and all the bugs and issues and cheers going through the roof with it. And this is a real pity because to be honest, I've been loving the operator design recently in Rainbow Six Siege and I'm talking like over a year and that is with Solus, Brava, Fenrir, Ram and then Tubero. And only really broke that good run of operators with Damus, who I just thought was a bit more boring and less interesting. So even though, of course, they dropped down to making just one operator per season years and years ago, I was still quite impressed with the quality of operators, or at least the inventiveness going into them that was giving us unique operators that I was still enjoying jumping into every season to go play. But then stretching out to the additional content, stuff like events has been really demoralizing because... I used to love when new events showed up and getting in and playing them and just having a blast. And of course, Outbreak way back in the day was something else. And that's when they obviously had some money to throw around because they were making an event that could have easily cost a million dollars or more for four weeks that it was going to be in the game for. That is insane. And it was done, I think, as a passion project. Now, if the developers were just to somehow turn around in year 10 and say, you know what, the reason year 9's got bad content is because we've made an Outbreak-based mode for year 10, but it's actually like not against aliens this time, it's actually against DMS and his men, and you're going to play through an entire campaign or something like that, then I'd be, of course, extremely happy with that. But I'm guessing that is not probably coming. Now, another thing about content that should not be ignored is the unseen content. And this is stuff like anti-cheats. So... Making something like Mousetrap took literally years, would have easily taken millions of dollars to put together because you need to hire the best of the best of engineers and programmers to get something off the floor that might be a solution. And this is it. Even when they started, they probably were like, we could maybe do this, 
I doubt they went in thinking, yeah, we're going to come to our side with a success. And they spent a lot of money, I'm guessing, on Mousetrap. And of course, every anti-cheat as well costs a ton of money. Anyone finding exploits in maps, they of course need to be patched out by people employed at the company. And all of that just ends up being, of course, content that added to the game that we don't really see when they're tweaking stuff and improving stuff. And unfortunately, I think a lot of money has been put into that over the years. And then God knows how much money the reputation system has cost, which was implemented way back, like many directors ago now, of Siege's top end. And it's just been inherited by the follow-up teams, which is really bad. And unfortunately, we still don't have a final product with that one. So that's still probably hemorrhaging huge amounts of money. And then overall, I would guess that the developers are getting a lot less money. I believe the way it works is developers put together a presentation of what they would like to do and take it off to Ubisoft's top management and they go over like and say, this is what we'd like to do for this year and we'd like this much money to go and do it. And they can have maybe three plans. One's a big one like, oh, here, we're going to make a massive campaign for the game. We need this much money to do it. And then plan two might be like just kind of the same as last year. And then plan three might be like a you know, tuned down one with less cost overall. And then it's the top end management who end up getting to pick. So if you ever want to complain about developers being lazy, just remember you can write a letter if you want to the CEO of Ubisoft and have a good little bit jam because you can actually do that. But anyway, that's the end of the content section of this video. We'll just do a quick conclusion and we'll move on to the next section. So the conclusion here is, I think that Rainbow Six Siege's content level is in a very bad place. And I have all my fingers crossed that the reason year nine is this lackluster is because actually they're putting resources from this year into building stuff for year 10 because they want to have a blowout with year 10. But if that's the case, they've gone and absolutely killed year nine in the process. And if not, they're just being given very little money to actually do anything that is gameplay that we the players can actually play. And of course, that is one of the major cornerstones of a live service game because if there's no content, players are just going to go away. But anyway, let's move on to the next section, which is cheaters. So of course, this season, we have had an explosion of cheaters. Now, this did start with last season as well, but I think it's got way worse. And I would also say this is equally bad on PC and on console. But of course, the level of cheats on PC is significantly worse with aimbots and all that jazz and even crazier stuff. And I think we also had really bad miscommunication this year with the Operation New Blood reveal where the director said that they had clamped down on cheating, especially rage cheers. And I remember reacting that and thinking, no, there's no way that is accurate. Now, I do think the developers really do believe that their anti-cheats are working quite well and their data is showing this. I do not believe this actually to be accurate. I think there's a possibility that they're getting blinded by their data and think that things are going a bit better than they really are. Now, I think they're caught on to it now, but definitely, like I remember sitting down with Titanium Rolo at Sao Paulo and we had a chat about cheating and we were both very confident that cheating on console has not really reduced much and the developers think it really has but we are pretty convinced that it hasn't. And I think that's also shown up on the PC side of stuff as well, as that has definitely gotten worse this season, and it was very bad already last season. We also got told a couple of months ago in one of their latest blog posts about cheating that they've actually started to restructure their anti-cheating team, and they're growing it, they're putting more resources into it, but it's one of those chicken and egg things. What came first? Did the restructuring happen after the cheating problem got out of hand and they were like, oh God, we need to do something? Or did they start restructuring, then the cheating got out of hand because they were doing the restructuring? Either way, I'm hoping that it does, of course, lead to better anti-cheat in the future and things getting back under control. But I do wonder how many seasons or years that will take. And of course, if it will get fixed before Siege's death. Because cheating is, yet again, another pillar, just like the content, that if it is broken, you're going to end up with your players leaving the game. And that's overall pretty much it. I can't really say much about anti-cheating. There's not really much else I can add to the subject here. But conclusion-wise, I think that this is one of the worst seasons for cheating, both on console and PC. I do think there's a little bit of glimmer of hope in the future. Like There's going to be full-on 90-day bans for console cheaters will get pushed into PC lobbies and that might 
end up managing to push a few because right now there still isn't enough of a deterrent to cheating on console maybe that will finally get there but we'll have to wait and see of course and that is the only glimmer of hope i have and then for pc cheating you're gonna need a goddamn miracle and that leads us into our final subject which is bugs so I actually feel somehow like New Blood has went back to year two of Rainbow Six Siege and is just incredibly broken. Now the main issue was a dead zone problem on console or anyone playing with a controller. You could, if you play a controller on PC, you'd also have it too. Now this wasn't everyone. I didn't get hit with it. It seemed to work fine for me, but certainly it took them three weeks to get it fixed, which meant a chunk of the player base could not play Rainbow Six Siege for that time. And if they did, it was a horrendous experience. Now, again, connecting back to something like X Defiant, a brand new game that's launched, it's the first FPS on its game engine. They had a bug recently and it's still not being fixed, which is an FPS issue on PS5, which means that it stutters like crazy. Now it's gonna take them about three days to fix that because it has to go through console validation and all that to get it out. So taking three weeks, to fix a dead zone issue. And not only that, they pushed out a hot fix, which didn't work. Then they went, okay, another patch, let's try that. It broke matchmaking, trying to fix a dead zone issue. And then they had to revert that. Then they finally got a fix out, which did fix it, but it took them three weeks to do. And it really feels like Rainbow Six Siege is back in like year one or two for me, because I was back there in the early days when you couldn't even match make sometimes. So it is mental how things have just gone tits up real quickly. Now, thankfully, it used to also be the case that every single season, the same bug would come back and have to get fixed again. I haven't seen that nearly as much. So I feel like there is progress actually being made on the bugs over the years and things are a lot more stable, but we've kind of come back to the point where something like dead zones shouldn't break. And if it does, it should be fixed within a couple of days. So I'm really worried about the future because this could be just the start of more big issues that pop up and are not easily fixed or almost take a month to fix. Now, we certainly know that there is players who do want to play a game like Rainbow Six Siege, have a good experience, cheater free, bug free, and of course, get content regularly with events and operators and hopefully other stuff as well. And we've seen with Operation Deadly Omen that we had our biggest spike in player numbers ever. And then, of course, with Operation New Blood, we've seen one of our biggest drops ever in player numbers. And I think Siege is still unique enough that it can get a constant amount of players to come in and check it out. But again, we also should not be blinded by the data like the developers maybe have been when it comes to the cheaters, because really, Steam charts don't mean much overall if they're going up or down. So we can look at last season and go, ooh, biggest number ever, Siege is back. But the reality is, Siege is a live service game. It needs to be constantly maintained. It needs to be constantly updated. It needs to be constantly protected. And you could never let up on that. Now, to me, I think we'll probably see the biggest numbers we ever have in year 10, with hopefully some big surprises that they'll chuck in. But my confidence on them maintaining those numbers is very minimal. And to me, they really need to open up a whole new section. If they do want Siege to go another 10 years, I think they got to add something special in. Like, for instance, I've been playing Tarkov PvE. The mode is not perfect, but my God, am I having a lot of fun. And I think, what if Outbreak was still in Rainbow Six Siege? Will I still be playing it? Will I still be jumping in and having a little bit of PvE experience? And if there was, like, say, a campaign one day in Siege, which got a mission every season, would that make me just a bit more interested to play the game much more? So yeah, I wonder what uh, the future of Siege is, but I think right now the three main pillars that keep a live service game alive are all broken, and that is content cheers and bugs. I think until these are fixed, I think they're going to have major problems. I think the bugs could be fixed this year because hopefully New Blood is just a blip with that dead zone issue and that kind of thing doesn't return. But Siege has always been buggy, so I don't have confidence on that. But I'm hoping that'll be one where they can minimize it. And then Cheers, hopefully it turns back into the cat and mouse game and we get the other switch around where Ubisoft is able to clamp down on the Cheers for a while and we get back to relative normality. 
that maybe will happen in the second half of the year, but my God, I'm not confident on that at all. And then content. Of course, looking at this year's roadmap, I don't even have to say that I'm not confident because I just don't think there is any content this year at all. And hopefully the Greek operator is fun and great, but really, I think it's going to be lackluster. I think the Blackbeard rework will end up being really lackluster as well. And unfortunately, I don't think there'll be any new events and nothing to really get the this year up in gear. So my overall feeling and main conclusion of this video is that year nine will probably be a bit of a throwaway year. And if they've put more resources into doing something for year 10, maybe that'll be an interest. And I, I assume they're going to have a, some surprises for year 10. But um, yeah, I think we're going to be in kind of cruise control until year 10, hopefully not crashing before then. And then I think year 10 will be interesting. But then after year 10, I think it's going to be very generic for Siege afterwards. And I think that could be the long, slow death of Rainbow Six Siege after that. But anyway, guys, let me know what you lot are thinking about in the comments below and I'll catch you next time.